Hey guys, welcome back to Amirnan Explains Beyond. My name is Karish and today I'm back with the latest really scary movie from Japan and its name Minato Uta aka Sana. It might not be available in your country right now so skip to the next video because this video will be full of spoilers. Minato Uta is directed by our infamous director Takashi Shimzu and no matter what people say about this movie, I think they really need to remove their nostalgia goggles before watching it. It was an amazing movie that circles around Generations Music Band from Japan and a cursed melody. So we're gonna talk about Minoru Uta, so stick around till end. On top of everything, if you're new to my channel then make sure to subscribe to it cause this is the best place to find horror from around the world. And with that said, let's dive into the video. So the movie begins in a storeroom of a radio station where we see a worker named Asuka. She was looking around when a band member of Generation came and his name was Komori. But right then, Asuka found an old envelope that was with the things which was sent to the radio station years ago but were left untouched. That particular envelope belonged from 30 years ago and inside there was a cassette tape. From here, the scene goes a bit later where Komori was doing a morning talk show where he'll be taking live calls. A caller called but Komori just hears a static noise and then a demonic voice said to him, Did you find my cassette tape? Komori thought it was a prank, so he just talked around the topic before hanging up. There we also see some more characters and they were Mandy and Shira Hama and these two were also a part of Generation Ban. We met with their manager Rin and after the show, Rin, Mandy, Shirahama and Komori were on their way home but Komori forgot something so he came back. It was then that Komori heard a melody coming from the storeroom and it was like We will hear this melody over and over again in this entire movie. Komori thought it's Asuka, so he went in, though there he witnessed a woman who disappeared as soon as Komori turned on the lights and the cassette tape fell to the floor. Scared, Komori went and picked up the tape when Asuka came there. Now this time, Asuka reads the title of the tape, which reads Minado Uta, and this means everyone's song. There was an address on the envelope and there was a note inside that reads, Listen to my song. I want you to not let go of me. Never let go of me. Keep this note into your account. But anyway, Komori was scared so he went home. Seeing goes on a private investigator named Gonta, where his assistant told him about the Generation Music Group. And there we see four more band members and they were Kazuhara, Ryota, Yuta and Ryo. Assistant told that three days ago, a member named Komori went missing. And our manager Rin wants Gonda to investigate and find Komori internally. At first, Gonda denied, but the money was good enough for him to agree. Late at night, Gonda received a phone call from his wife, and we find out that Gonda rarely goes home, and his wife's always mad at him. Now, three days ago, we see Komori, and he was scared. He talked to Rin and then called some other friend, but couldn't hear anything on the phone but a static voice. Komori was breathing heavy and when the elevator arrived, he accidentally bumped into a girl and her stuff fell on her own. Komori helped the girl pick up her stuff when suddenly the girl started humming that melody. Suddenly her face turned demonic and Komori was hella scared when the door was closed and that was when Komori went missing. Three days later, Gonda came to investigate about Komori and he asked Rin what did Komori talk about the last time. Rin told him that Komori was talking about a cassette tape but she was not sure what he meant. Gonda then called Ryota to ask stuff about Komori. Ryota came and told Gonda that on the day he went missing, that evening everyone was practicing but Komori was feeling weird about the song. Komori suddenly started screaming and Ryo took him out and that was the last time Ryota ever saw him. Also that night when Ryota was going home, he got a call from Komori. But he just heard a static voice from the other side and then suddenly, a voice told him, Listen to my song. Scared, Ryota hung up but as now Ryota was telling all this to Gonda, he started having hiccups. The hiccups wouldn't stop no matter what. 
So in a rush, he wrote down leave. Got to think about what just happened and he started clicking his pan in a weird rhythm. So remember this. Then Rin told Gorda that when Komori went missing, she and Shirahama were trying to call him. But suddenly, Mandy and Yuda started screaming out of fear as if they've seen a ghost. Then came in Shirahama but he doesn't answer Gorda properly since Gorda didn't even know his name. After that, Ryo came in for interview and he told that Komori told him that he was hearing a weird melody and according to Ryo, since that day, he too was hearing a melody. Suddenly, Gonda began clicking his pen again and Ryu started humming the melody. Rin noticed that both men were unaware of their actions so she wake him up but the two were acting as if they were sleeping with their eyes open. There Rin started itching her neck in a weird pattern as well so we must remember all these little things. Next in line was Yuta who came but he was already scared. He shut the curtain before answering to Gonda and then he told him that on the day of practice Yuta was sitting near Mandy when Mandy's airpod fell under the table. Yuta bent to pick up his airpod when he saw a girl standing behind Shirahama and Rin. Then when Mandy saw the girl, he screamed out of fear and this was the scene Rin just talked about earlier. Anyway, Yuta noticed that the girl was only visible from under the table but hearing all that bullshit about a ghost and melody, Gada was not satisfied. He told Yuta that he's looking for clues not some ghost stories but then Yuta ran away and we could see a girl behind the curtains. It was almost night so Gona called it a day and went back to his hotel room which was in the same building as generation members. He talked to his wife and daughter with Soli. His daughter told him that she's hearing a weird melody from Gonda's side. Gonda looked around but there was no melody though his daughter thought that Gonda might be with some other strange woman, so she hung up. Gonda was scared, so he left the building for a smoke, and from behind him, Ryo left the building too. Ryo came across a vending machine, but there, his heart hammered when he saw a girl trying to crawl under the vending machine. Ryo asked the girl if she's okay, but the girl replied, Did you like my song? You sang my song today, didn't you? Scared, Ryo ran back, but that time Gonda saw him. Gonda followed Ryo and Ryo cross paths with Shirahama. The two went inside Mandy's room since he was playing very loud music. Mandy was actually scared because he couldn't stop the melody in his mind. Everyone called Mandy down, but after a while, Shirahama asked Mandy what melody was he talking about. The question confused Mandy because he heard that melody from Shirahama's mouth. With a blink in the past, it was revealed that when Shirahama took Komori with him to calm him down, but while he was sitting with him, Komori started humming the melody. The curse went into Shirahama too and he hummed the melody together. Both were cursed and lost in thoughts when Mandy heard the melody and woke him up. But now in the present, Shirahama had no memory of what happened that day. The two talked about what might be the cause of all of it and they end up talking about the cassette tape Komori found. Next day, Gonda and Rin were again at it. Rin was still itching her neck in that rhythm but anyways, Rin and Gonda went and checked the CCTV footage of the night before Komori went missing. In the video, they saw Asuka and Komori out of the storage room and Asuka had a cassette tape in her hand and evidently, everyone knew Komori was talking about a tape. Without further ado, Rin and Gaja went to the radio station but there they met with Shirahama, Yuta and Mandy and those three wanted the same thing. From Asuka's stuff, they got the access to that tape and then it was played in front of everyone. Soon after, the girl started humming her melody and Mandy was instantly scared. Shirahama stopped the tape but even after the tape was paused, the melody continues in a much more creepy way. The scene was a scene where I got goosebumps as the melody continues and everyone was confused until Rin saw that girl in a reflection. Rin screamed and then Asuka appeared demonically in the recording room and then she disappeared. Everyone went in the recording room but there was no one and Asuka vanished from thin air. Everyone finally believed that there might be something demonic happening. Rin told them that she just saw a girl in the mirror and then Mandy said that the girls wear it a school dress 
and then Yuta concluded that it's a curse. Gonda picked up the tape and told a tale there. There was a music band named Kaguya and after the band's final concert, a tape was revealed that the weird thing was that the tape didn't have a song. It had a woman's voice inside and the woman was just saying one thing over and over again that she wished that she would have been there. After some time, it was revealed that a girl died in a car accident before the final concert. She was a huge fan so some people say it was her voice in that tape and she was talking about how much she wanted to be in the concert. According to Gonda, the tape they have might have the similar case. Perhaps it's a spirit of a fan but they need to hear the tape till the end to figure out. Gonda resumed the tape and this time the girl was saying something indiscernible. <laughs> Her words were all flipped and then there was also a woman saying something. Scared, Shirahama stopped the tape and then Gonda noticed the address on the tape's envelope and obviously Rin and Gonda went to visit the address. Seeing goes on Mandy, Shirahama and Yuta and they took a shortcut and reached the house before Gonda. They were standing in front of a demonic house and Shirahama rang the doorbell. Someone answered in the answering machine, but Shirahama just heard a static voice. The machine soon made noise that scared them and they ran away. They then talked to the neighbors and discovered that Takatani family used to live in that house. However, no neighbor wanted to talk about their family. Meanwhile, Yuta was waiting in the car when he saw a little boy sitting on the stairs of the house. As soon as the boy saw Yuta, he went inside the house and obviously Yuta followed him. The door was not locked, so Yuta went in and the house was quite clean from inside. There was even sunlight, which was strange because outside the sun was concealed behind the clouds. Yuta called for somebody and he saw vacuum cleaner's wire on the stairs coming out from a room on the first floor. It was then that a pregnant woman named Shiori came to greet Yuta and she said, I'm sorry. I can't come right now. Can you wait for me a bit? After this, Shiori called for her daughter. Isana, it's time to tidy up your room. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then she went back from where she came. Well, the girl Sana is obviously our ghost. That's why the international title of this movie is Sana. Anyway, Yuta was confused when suddenly someone pulled the wire inside Sana's room and the door closed on its own. It was then that Shiori came back and said, I'm sorry, I can't come right now. Can you wait for me a bit? After this, Shiori called for her daughter, this time a bit demonic. Hey, Sara, it's time to tidy up your room. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then she went back from where she came. Yuta was then hella confused thinking what was happening and then he saw a shadow inside Sana's room. When Shiori came back and this time, she sounded even more demonic. I'm sorry, I can't come right now. Can you wait for me a bit? After this, she recalled for her daughter. It's hey, Sana, it's time to tidy up your room. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then she went back from where she came. Yuta's spine she went with fear, with Sully. Shiori came towards him mumbling something demonic and seeing her, Yuta ran to save his life. Mandy and Shirahama calmed him down but then came Detective and Rin and the two scolded the three since they shouldn't have come there alone. Anyway, Yuta didn't let him go inside the house and they all left the place together. On their way, Gonda was a bit worried and upon asking, Gonda revealed something important and with that, Shirahama started tapping his finger in a weird rhythm. Anyway, Gonja revealed that when he read Sana's address and name, he remembered some vague memories. Actually, when Gonja was in third grade, a girl died after falling off the school's roof. No one knew what happened to her, so everyone thought she committed an alignment, but there was a rumor that circulated around the school. The rumor was a girl named Sana pushed the girl off the edge. Now, Gonja wasn't sure if that Sana was the same Sana they were looking for, so they went to meet with Gonda's teacher. The teacher brought out some old files and looking here and there, Gonda found the photo of Sana Takatani. When teacher found out that those people were looking for Sana Takatani, the teacher was scared. 
teacher also brought Sana's class dream diary, which was a book where every kid had written something about their dreams. Sana wrote that she wanted to become a singer, but that wasn't all. Sana also wrote that if she wants to put soul in her songs, so she needs to hear the voice of her soul. And if she wanna hear her soul, then to do that, she must hear other people's soul. Reading that, everyone was shocked, and then the teacher told them a story. Teacher said that one day, Sana was really sad because her mother told her that she wasn't worth living and that she shouldn't have given birth to her. It means Sana's mom, Shiori, didn't like her daughter, and that was why Sana was so depressed. Other people in the school used to pick on her, and one day, three girls hid Sana's notebook behind a vending machine. Sana tried to crawl under the vending machine, and she ended up scratching her entire arms. Teacher was shocked to see Sana like that, so she helped her. Teacher always believed that Sana was a really bright girl, but she was going through a lot. That day, Sana hummed her melody for the teacher. It was the same melody that the movie is about. Gonja then asked the teacher about the girl who died, and the teacher told him that her name was Takagu. Actually, see, one day, teacher saw four girls on the terrace, and she instantly rushed over them, but it was in that one of those girls fell down and died, and that girl was Takagu. No one knew who those three other girls were, but Gonda asked if Takagu was murdered by Sana Takatani. Teacher instantly denied that fact and told him that it was just a rumor and nothing. Sana was a bright girl and she wouldn't do anything to harm others. Teacher proved this by telling them that when she took Sana home with her injured arms, she already hit Sana and treated her like an animal. Not only that, one day teacher got a call from Sana and she was scared. Teacher went to check on her, but she was terrified when she got there. Because Sana's mother and father were sitting on the floor. The door to Sana's room was broken, and Sana's dead body was on it. A wire was tangled around her neck, and a record player was with her. And that made teacher believe that Sana was a victim, and real demons were her parents. With this information, the three left and went to Sana's house. They placed flowers and prayed for her soul to rest in peace. And there they finally figured out why Sana sent that tape to the radio station 30 years ago. She wanted the entire world to hear her song, but no one touched the tape in 30 years. The three went back to the hotel and then Gonda told everyone that he's gonna investigate more and try to find out a way to bring back Komori. Perhaps bringing peace to Sana might lift the curse. Gonda then left and sat inside his car where he played the tape again, but this time, Sana's voice was clear. Sana had recorded about the making of her song, and at first, she talked about a cat. It was revealed that Sana strangled the cat to her death, and listening to the cat scream, Gondo was scared. After that, Sana recorded something about a girl, and then Gonda heard some girls arguing, and then screaming, and then flesh spattering which was obviously the voice of Takagu falling from the roof. It means Gonda was right and Sana was the one who murdered Takagu on purpose. Sana then talked about a boy named Toshio and then Gonda had a vision. Gonda saw Shiori who was sleeping when she heard a tapping noise. Shiori woke up and looked under her blanket and was terrified to see her demonic daughter. Sana was tapping on her mother's pregnant belly in a rhythmic way. The baby inside was Toshio, and the tapping sound was matching with Toshio's heartbeat. Gonda then heard the heartbeat, and then he remembered something wicked. Actually, see, the clicking pen, Rin itching her neck, the tapping of Shirahama's finger, Ryojo's hiccups, and everything else was matching with Toshio's heartbeat, and that heartbeat was making a rhythm with Sana's tapping and her melody. Sana's song was listening to Sana's soul and other soul and Gonda finally found out that Sana wanted all that happened on purpose. Sana wanted her song to have a soul that can speak to everyone's soul and that was why she started killing people so she could listen to their souls and gave her song a soul. It was then that teacher came to meet with Gonda and the scene goes on Mandy. Mandy heard Sana's melody and he followed that. Meanwhile. Ryojo was in shower, but his hiccups refused to leave him alone. Suddenly, he heard Sana's melody, and then 
a hand appeared on his back and pulled him down. Ryota screamed and then disappeared. Ryo came there after hearing Ryota's voice but he couldn't find him. Ryo looked around for Ryota and found someone sleeping under the sheets. Though when he threw a remote control on the sheet, no one was there. Suddenly, Sara started singing from somewhere under the bed and Ryo saw her as she was trying to crawl under the bed. Sara then crawled under the sheets and attacked on Ryo before taking him with her. Back on Gonja, the teacher told him something else, something she was not quite sure about. She told him that Sana might have another side that she ignored. Actually, see, when teacher was looking for Sana's notebook, Sana was licking her blooded arms. That day, teacher called those three girls that Sana claimed were behind hiding her notebook and one of those girls were Takagu. The girls told the teacher that they don't mess with Sana and they didn't do anything. According to those girls, Sana was an evil person, but teacher didn't believe him one bit. However, Sana heard everything, who was at the terrace at that time. The teacher then revealed that after that, those three girls might have gone to the roof to teach Sana a lesson, and that was the time when Takagu fell and died. Now when the teacher was looking at it from a new perspective, and what Sana wrote in her dream book, teacher was believing that Sana might have killed Takagu to give life to her curse to song. The scene goes back on Mandy, who was in the hallway listening to loud music to avoid melody, when suddenly the curse caught him. Mandy removed the airpods and started listening to Sana's song, and then suddenly, Toshio appeared behind him. Mandy stared at Toshio for a while and then, Toshio ran towards him, turned into Sana, and took Mandy away. Mandy disappeared and Shirahama saw that. Meanwhile, Yuta was scared and was sitting in a corner when his sight fell on a wire and then Shiori came into the apartment. When Yuta looked at Shiori, he was mesmerized by the curse and then Shiori began to say her same demonic dialogue over and over again. Each time, her voice turned a little demonic and then her neck jilted and her eyes turned white. It was then that Rin and Shirahama came outside Yuta's room, but they heard Shiori's voice from inside, and when the two broke into the place, Yuta was gone. Now only three people were remaining, Rin, Shirahama, and Gonda, and the three sat down and talked about Sana. Gonda revealed everything he just discovered, and then if they need to get rid of Sana, they must know exactly what happened, and that was why the three went back to her house. That time, the house wasn't in a good shape. The door to Sana's room was lying near the stairs. Gonda removed the door and the three were gonna go into her room when Soli, inside a mirror, turned on a picture in which Sana will show him what happened to her. We now see the vacuum cleaner's wire hanging outside Sana's door and inside, Sana was singing her song. Sana's father came and saw that wire and he asked Sana what that wire was for and Sana replied that the wire was stuck in her door so he must pull the wire from outside. Sana's father started pulling the wire and Sana told her father to pull the wire even harder and harder and harder or else the door would be stuck like that forever. Sana's father called Shiori and then both husband and wife pulled the wire as hard as they could but Sana was giggling inside the room. Sana's parents moved around the stairs so they couldn't see when Sana's shadow appeared in the window and there we finally figured out that Sana put the wire around her neck on purpose so that her parents would kill her accidentally and after that Sana's spirit can make her song alive or otherwise cursed. Sana's spirit will give birth to a melody that will sing to everyone until they listen to it the way Sana wanted to listen to it. Seeing that, Rin felt bad for Sana and she ran upstairs to save her. But just as Rin entered Sana's room, the door closed on its own. Meanwhile, in the past, Sana was hanging behind the door with wire tangled on her neck. But at the same time, she was recording her song. In prison, Toshio came up of the stairs and went inside the room. And then the door slowly slid backwards. While in past, Ashiori and her husband was pulling the wire, Sana's curse caught him, 
and the two pulled the wire laughing like maniacs like they knew they were killing their daughter. In prison, Gonda and Shirahama were speechless but solely. From inside the room came out a demonic sana. She was singing her song to Gonda and Shirahama. Both the guys were so scared that they couldn't even move. But meanwhile, Rin teleported into Sana's memory and that happened because Rin was feeling Sana more than anyone else. Because no matter how demonic that girl was, she was still a human and Rin looked at that human. Now because of the strain, the door broke. But before Sana could fall down the stairs, Rin caught Sana. And now if you remember, then Sana had written in a letter that was with the tape that she wanted people to hold on to her and never let go. And that was what Rin did. She held on to Sana and didn't let go. Meanwhile, demonic Sana came down the stairs, sung her song, and this was creepy as hell. But in the past, Rin and Sana together fell down the stairs and with that, demonic Sana disappeared. In the past, Sana smiled at Rin and there Sana believed that someone heard her song the way she wanted them to listen to her song. Someone found her and didn't let go and that someone was Rin and with that, Rin came back in the real world behind the broken door. Gonda and Shirahama instantly helped Rin and Rin had Sana's recorder around her neck. On the other hand, Asuka came back in the recording room. Kawori returned in the elevator, Ryota in shower, Ryo in bedroom, Maddie in hallway, and Yuta in his room. And this means Sara finally lifted her curse. Well, let's recap everything. So you see, when Sara died, she had that cursed song tape that she made with so much effort for the world to listen to her. But no one touched her tape until 30 years later Asuka did. Not only that, after Sana died, her parents were cursed and after a few years they unalived themselves and killed their son Toshio. In the end, Rin understood Sana and she did what Sana wanted that was why Sana released all her friends. But Sana's dream was to make her song an international hit and that was why, in the end, after a generation band concert, Everyone in the audience went silent. Suddenly, Sana's melody was played in the speaker and everyone in the audience started humming the melody. Seeing that, Rin was in shock and then Sana appeared in the audience who finally succeeded to achieve her dream. Everyone was cursed in the end but what will happen after? What you guys think? Let me know in the comments cause this is where the movie ends. So this was a summary of the movie, Mira no Uta, and I hope you all is true but have told you like my video. If you wanna watch this movie then you gotta subscribe to my telegram channel. If you wanna be in touch with me then follow my other social media, all the links are in the description box. If you like this video then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more horror content. And I will see you all in the next one. Till then, stay awake, cause they always see you.